Mega Man 2, what to say, what to say. I'm surprised I've gone this long without covering a video game. I try to keep this channel as balanced as possible, even though half of Wikipedia's good articles are just isotopes and heavy metals. Not the type of heavy metal I'd rather be covering, unfortunately. Once upon a time, platformers dominated the video game industry. The likes of Mario, Crash Bandicoot, and Sonic laid the foundation for games like Shovel Knight, Cuphead, and Celeste. But one game. One game owes its rise and fall during the golden age of the platformer to a developer with an unrelenting drive to release never-ending sequels. And that game is Mega Man. And my favorite, which is also considered one of the best in the series, and probably owes its place in our household to my dad reading a good review, is Mega Man 2. After seeing the success of Super Mario, Japanese video game developer Capcom, known better today for games like Resident Evil, Monster Hunter, and Street Fighter, came together at the drawing board and said, hey, what if we made Mario but with a gun instead of an arm? It's perfect, Capcom said. Who does he fight against? And the team was like, I don't know, just start naming things. Heat Man. Metal Man. Crash Man. Okay, okay, good. Now, now who's the big bad guy? He needs to be scary, something to communicate that you don't mess with him. Dr. Wily! Uh, um, okay, okay, Dr. Wily? Why Dr. Wily? Cause he's a wily guy! And what distinguishes him from other villains in the 80s? <laughs> Nothing! But this was actually one of the selling points in Mega Man. Because unlike in other games, you could actually choose what order to defeat bosses in. That whole thing that games do now, where they sort of baby you through the opening sequences so you can find your footing, didn't really exist back in the day. There were no rules in old games. They just went, see all these mean guys? Yeah, fight one of them. And when you pick one, you're dropped into a themed level based on the boss. And in the beginning, all you've got is eggs. The cool part is, each boss has a power that you can absorb, which is kind of Mega Man's thing. In the cartoon, he like, puts his two fingers on the slain enemy and then touches them to his forehead, and now he's got their powers. Oh, now you got my weapon! Wait, did they base this on Metroid? How have I never noticed that? I said he was Mario with a gun earlier, but he's definitely Samus. Here's the 3D version in case those pixels didn't come across. Yeah, Metroid came out a year before the first Mega Man. So he's actually like a less cool version of Samus. So anyway, once you've got the enemy's powers, you can start using them on the other bosses, which are weak to each other's abilities. So Metal Man can be killed with eggs, which gives you the saw blades that chopped off the fingers of that old man you saw once. And then Bubble Man is weak to metal blades, so you leave him fingerless, and you can use the bubbles on Heat Man. And I actually can't remember what powers Heat Man gives you. So then you can just, like, get really hot. Again, these can be completed in any order, and you're given no instructions. So you kind of just have to figure it all out on your own. If you want the real experience, try beating it without the internet. It's hard to imagine what playing this game used to be like, because it was just you and a TV. There was no cell phone to text your friends and ask for help. No internet to give answers to your problems. Just you and a CRT television that you had to slap on the side each time the picture went fuzzy. Now, I haven't even mentioned one of the best aspects of this game yet. The absolutely banging soundtrack. I would think that the gaming community agrees that the Crash Man music in Mega Man 2 is among the best gaming tracks in 16-bit history. <laughs> song from the game. The entire game is loaded with great music. And did I mention that it's hard? You have to earn your way to victory in Mega Man 2. Adding to what I said earlier about games holding your hand too much, there was this period in video games between like 2002 and 2010 where companies were trying to find ways to make more money. Perfectly reasonable pursuit if you're a business, but a consequence of that was legions of game companies putting you into safe, padded environments that on one hand made games more accessible to casual and unfamiliar gamers, but on the other restricted things like freedom, creativity, and the satisfaction of overcoming trials. This was further compounded by the success of the Wii in 2006, 
which made so much money catering to a family-oriented demographic, which at the time was a completely untapped market. This was eventually corrected in 2010, in my opinion, by Dark Souls, the game that brought back difficulty in a way that wasn't just turning up the stats on all the enemies. Mega Man 2 does not suffer from baby mode syndrome. It's only got four directions and two buttons. How hard can it be? The sense of accomplishment you get from progressing through this game is real, and not just artificially handed to you like too many of the games out there today. But maybe we should take a look at the article itself. That was pretty much one thread to the next of my own thoughts. And you don't have to take my word for it. Mega Man 2 is literally in the Wikipedia article titled List of Video Game Soundtracks Considered the Best. The criteria for which is games that have been included on best soundtrack lists for at least three separate publications. It includes titles like Halo, Super Mario 64, and The Elder Scrolls Skyrim, the last Elder Scrolls to ever exist. The success of the original Mega Man wasn't enough to justify a sequel. The director of the game, Akira Kitamura, wanted to make a sequel, but the producer at Capcom was against it. So instead, he went to Capcom's vice president and was told he could only make a sequel if the staff was working simultaneously on other projects at the company as well. So working off the first game, they added more levels and weapons and only had about three to four months of development time to get the game finished. Now, if you know nothing about the gaming industry, it already has a reputation for insanely strict timelines and crushing crunch periods. Add to that Japanese work culture in the 1980s, and you've got a recipe for situations like Eiji Aonuma, who was given one year to develop a sequel to the biggest Zelda game of all time, which ended up causing nightmares due to stress, and ended up being turned into a scene at the beginning of the game. So never mind, I guess it's worth it. All you have to do is sacrifice some ethics and a little bit of human soul, and you have an awesome video game. Capcom actually allowed for fans to submit designs for bosses leading up to Mega Man 2, and received over 8,000 before settling on the final eight seen in the game. The box art for the North American game was done by an actual illustrator and resulted in this cover art, which you'll be familiar with if you played the game there. Mega Man is seen holding a pistol instead of his signature arm cannon, because, according to the illustrator, that's what he was instructed to do by the American team at Capcom. Ah, America. Mega Man 2's features became staples for the series moving forward. Eight bosses instead of six, energy tanks to fill your health, and a password system all became regular parts of the series, and ended up spawning a huge number of sequels. You can buy the Mega Man collections now on the Nintendo Switch if you own one. The game still holds up. They're on a short list of old video games that are still completely playable and ready to give you a good time. If you haven't seen the sequelitis video, Mega Man Classic vs. Mega Man X, definitely go check that out here. I'll leave a link in the description. It's a much better video than this one, and I'd go as far as to say it's in my top 10 YouTube videos of all time, along with Melody Sheep's Time Lapse of the Future and the Rockin' 1000 Learn to Fly performance. Bye-bye, dude!